Inflation in Zimbabwe is so bad that in January, the government released a $50 billion note, enough to buy two loaves of bread. The unemployment rate has risen to more than 85%. It is now estimated that 20% of Zimbabwe's total population have mental health problems, while a recent survey done by local psychiatrists found that 35% of Zimbabwean women living in high-density suburbs exhibited mental health issues. Faced with these crises, Robert Mugabe, absolute ruler since 1980, arbitrarily slashed his country's national mental health plan in order to get better loan rates from the World Bank. Each province is now responsible for its own services, which translated means little or none. Mental health inmates are simply shifted back and forth between facilities, all of which set the stage for an item that was first published in a Bulawayo newspaper. The road from Harare, the capital city of Zimbabwe, to Bulawayo in the southwest crosses stretches of lonely scrub brush dotted by small traditional villages huddled around patches of trees. The view of the low mountains in the distance is pretty, but the asphalt road itself is a nightmare of holes and cracks for most of its 556 kilometers from city to city. If all goes well, a bus can make the trip in eight hours. In Africa, things seldom go well. Ward 12, the mental asylum wing at Harare's main hospital, needed to transfer 20 patients to Ingusheni Mental Hospital in Bulawayo. Money was short, so the transport was a used school bus and a hired driver. Overworked attendants loaded the confused patients aboard, tied them to their seats, handed the driver a clipboard with their names and the hospital address in Bulawayo. The head nurse tossed an envelope with gas money and waved him on his way. The only stipulation was that the driver had to get the patient signed into the next hospital to get his wages. Four hours later, and somewhere south near the small city of Gweru, the harried driver spotted some roadside stands and pulled off for a break. He locked the noisy bus and went off to see what he could find. What he found included some locally brewed beer, which was a lot cheaper than gas. More than a few pints later, the driver staggered back to stare in shock at his silent and thoroughly empty bus. Realizing the trouble he was in and thinking about his lost pay, the inebriated driver hatched what seemed to him to be a reasonable plan. He jumped in the bus and raced for the crowded transport station in Gweru. Parking nearby, he checked the fare for one way to Bulawayo and then offered half price tickets. Holding the clipboard to look official, he was soon besieged with anxious passengers waving cash. He turned away families with children, and when he reached 20 adults, he shook his head to the remaining crowd and drove quickly off down the road. Bulawayo was once a fascinating city. Victorian-style buildings now stand dilapidated beside broken streets. Zimbabwe's second largest city, its downtown is filled with the color and noise of rushing people, snarling motorbikes, and honking taxi vans. The bus driver spotted 23rd Avenue and drove directly up to the large Ingusheni Mental Hospital emergency doors. Calming the passengers, he told them he'd be right back. The driver rushed through the double doors and found an overworked admittance staff. He slapped down the official paperwork from Ward 12 and explained that it had been a stressful trip and the sooner he could be on his way again, the better. He warned the nurses and helpers that his charges had escaped their restraints during the trip and were particularly excitable. Excitable was an understatement. Staff removed the furious and struggling passengers paying no attention to their rants. They'd heard it all before. The driver was paid and hurriedly drove off. It was three full days before suspicions were roused by some of the clinicians in the ward due to the consistency of the stories from all 20 of the transferred inmates. As for the real patients, nothing more was heard of them. It's assumed they just blended right back into that 20% of the population from which they came.